Verse 1 reads, one day Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come on, let's go over to where the Philistines have their outpost. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. Meanwhile, Saul and his 600 men were camped on the outskirts of Gibeah around the prominent tree of Megrin. Among Saul's men was Ahijah the priest, who was wearing the ephod, the priestly vest. Ahijah was the son of Ichabod's brother, Ahitub, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord, who had served at Shiloh. No one realized that Jonathan had left the Israelite camp. To reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between two rocky cliffs that were called Bozaz and Sina. The cliff on the north was in front of Michmash, and the one on the south was in front of Geba. Let's go across to the outpost of these pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Now I want you to get this here. Perhaps... Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle, whether he has many warriors or only a few. Do what you think is best, the armor bearer replied. I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. And we'll stop there. May God add his blessing uh, to the reading of the word. God, we thank you for the word. We thank you that it's moving and speaking, even as we've come here. And it seems like this doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in our lives. God, we know how you will use it and you will connect the dots. And you'll speak into our situation, not only personally, but collectively. God, we open up our hearts and we ask for your spirit to come and to minister to us to unlock places that we've locked up and that we've closed, and just to lead and guide in this season and in this time. Uh, we say we trust you. We trust you, and we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, this is decision-making season. How many of you are making a decision right now about something? So we find ourselves in a decision-making season, and sometimes what we do is we don't want to make the decision, so we stay in this place of, of comfort. The, the comfort is I'm not going to make it. I'm just going to stay here because I don't know what, what the, the outcome of my decision will be, so I'm going to stay in this perceived place of safety. And then we will also pull the God card and we will say, I'm only going to move or do something when I hear from God. And subconsciously we do this because then when it happens and it doesn't go the way that I want it to go, then who can I blame? I can blame God. Now, I'm not saying don't be prayerful. I'm not saying that God doesn't speak to us about situations and circumstances as we communicate with him. I believe all those things work together for our good, and God leads us in those. But we also have to be honest about when we just don't want to make a decision. And we don't want to make the decision because we are afraid. We are fearful. We don't want to take on the responsibility of the outcome of the decision, so, so we wait. So there's a difference between I'm waiting on the Lord and he hasn't told me to move until he speaks, and I'm waiting on the Lord because I don't want to make this decision because it's too heavy. Y'all real quiet on me. <laughs> God has given us everything that we need to make a decision. The spirit of God lives on the in, inside of you. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, of discernment, to be able to understand things that are happening and that are going on in front of you. And sometimes God gives us a choice. What is it 
that you want me to do for you. We've heard this in the scripture as he's talking to blind Bartimaeus. Time after time after time again, Jesus presented people with questions. What is it that you want? He is the God of choice. He doesn't make us choose him. We have a choice whether we want to choose him. And oftentimes it's like that in some of the decisions that we are making. Jonathan finds himself in a very interesting place. He's separate from his father and his father's camp. And it's him and his armor bearer and his, and his men in this area. And he is facing opposition. And it's historical opposition. It is generational opposition. Like this thing has been going on and on and on and on forever and forever. But he's in a decision making place. And something happens in Jonathan where he says, I'm not going to keep living or being like this. I'm going to make a decision about how I want to move forward in my life. And it's not this. I know there's an enemy on the other side, but let's go over. This is what he tells his armor bearer. Let's go over. So he is ready to make a move. In the midst of other people that aren't making moves. He's ready to leave the comfort. He's ready to leave the safety of not making a decision. So he says, let's go over. Y'all still with me? Yes. Now, what's interesting, it says he doesn't tell his father. Now, we may look at this and we would say, man, this is mad disrespectful. Your father is the king, one. Two, he's your father. So you're doing something and you haven't gotten permission. You're doing something and you haven't gotten permission from man. Let me, let me break through some, some walls you may have up. I remember I was getting ready to be a part of this 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 outreach, and it was a friend of mine, and I was saying, I need to go speak, uh, I need to go speak to this mentor of mine to, to get his permission, was the way that I was presenting it to him. And he said something that was so powerful, I'll never forget. He said, never ask man for permission what God has already placed on your heart to do. Saul is not in a good state. Remember what just happened. The prophet Samuel came and said what? Your kingdom is ended. <laughs> this moment of disobedience that you had, you've, you've ruined it for yourself. God, God is already, he's already training and, and working for somebody. So, so now what, what, what happens is Saul is not in the same place that Jonathan and his armor bearer are. They're in a different place. Be careful who you're consulting about your decision. Be careful who you're consulting about the decision that you're making. Have discernment. Where is this person at? Where are they at spiritually? Saul, <laughs> King Saul is in another camp. He's with the priest. The priest has on the sacred ephod. <laughs> Everything looks right, but the spirit of the Lord is not there. I want to say that again. Everything looks right. There's the king. There's the priest. The sacred garments are there. You would think 
if God was going to encourage somebody or release somebody to go do something, he would do it in this particular place. But it's not happening there. They don't even know Jonathan is, is going up. This is how out of touch they are with what God is doing. God is moving and they don't even know. God is moving and they don't even know. So you're consulting people about a decision that you're making with people that don't even know that God is moving. And it's because of their own personal stuff that they have going on when they're not in alignment with God. But this is where you're getting your life advice from. This is bonus. I don't even know why I'm staying on this. But maybe there's some people in the room this morning. You've been consulting people that you shouldn't be consulting about your decision. And some of it could be family. I love family. I'm a big, like, I do everything with my family. But there's some people in my family that I don't need to be asking about godly things and how he's flowing and moving in my life. And neither should you. Several years ago when we were relocating here, we were having the conversations with friends and family. And then me and Kimberly were talking about... Uh, her mom, Nana T, as we affectionately call her. Who is going to tell Nana T <laughs> that we're getting ready to move? And Kimberly was like, it won't be me. <laughs> so I'm the only one left, so I'm having to go have this conversation. Now, a little bit of context. Nana T had relocated from Dallas, Texas, to northwest Arkansas to be closer to grandkids Ouch. And me and Kimberly, we're the, we're the, the, the second level. <laughs> so now we're getting ready to go drop this, this news. So I go, sit down, have the conversation, tell Nana T, hey, we're getting ready to, to relocate. And then something just tells me, invite her. So I invite her. She listens, doesn't say much. We leave, go our separate ways. Don't hear anything from Nana T about the conversation at all for several weeks, maybe even months. <laughs> Could have went by. But we're still seeing each other, right? we still still uh, doing life with each other on a daily basis, but has not said one word about it. The day comes. They read our resignation letter to, the, to our community at church. Somebody comes up, is giving Kimberly a big hug. Uh, people are crying. And then somebody sees Nana T standing behind Kimberly, and she says, are you going too? And you can see Nana T is like, she's standing there. And then out of her mouth, she goes, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going too. She makes a decision. I don't know if she had made it before that moment, but for me, it looked like she made a decision in the moment that she was going to relocate. She made a decision. She made a decision, maybe that somebody in her family would say, you too old to make that move. You shouldn't make that move. That's, that's not wise. There's many voices in her life, right, that would want to consult her and influence the decision that she's making. But I want to tell you something. God was doing something, not only in Nana T, but there was something that was attached to her presence that God was also doing in our life. And she was able to, in the moment, use wisdom, have understanding, and discern what was happening in the times to make the decision and say, yes, I'm, I'm not going to be paralyzed. 
I'm not going to stay in this, in this place of, of comfort that I find myself in of, of, and, and safety of not making the decision. I'm going to step out and I'm going to go. I'm going to go over to the other side. Now, Jonathan also realizes that there are some immediate challenges. So oftentimes when we make a decision, we think, ah, now it's easy. Hard part is over. Right? I made the decision. But oftentimes there's challenges right there before you can even get to the other side. Jonathan is not in the greatest place strategically. He's not in the greatest place strategically. Physically, he's not in a great place. He's, he's in between these two cliffs. He's not in the greatest position to be engaging with his, with his enemy. It's, it's not very strategic at all. It actually looks foolish from the outside eye for him to be saying, hey, we're going to go over and engage from the other side. I want you to see these two pictures. One group looks right, has all the external things that people would say they would need. This other group, Jonathan and his armor bearer, not many, not in a great strategic place, but are saying yes. Y'all still with me? There will always be immediate challenges when you make a decision. That's a part of the journey. That's a part of the journey is there are immediate challenges. Jonathan has the ability to be able to be aware of the challenges in the journey. Because if you're not aware, then you can get discouraged really quickly. You think this thing is going to be easy. No, it's going to be difficult. When you say yes, it's going to be difficult. Anything worth having, anything worth moving towards with substance, there's going to be challenges. I love what Jonathan does is he names the challenges. These two cliffs had names. He names them. When we name stuff, we take taking responsibility for it. When I don't name, I can't ignore. I can turn my head. I can act like it's not there. No, he's saying, these two cliffs, <laughs> here are the names, Bozes and Sena. I'm, I'm butchering the names. But he's, but he's saying, these are the two cliffs in front of me that I have to go in between, down into, to actually get to the place of the decision that I'd made that I'm going to. An immediate challenge that he's aware of that he names. What are the immediate challenges in your life with the decision that you're making about your next step? Are you aware of them? Are you creating a realistic pathway towards the thing that you're saying, yes, I'm going towards it? Or, or is somebody throwing down rose petals as you are walking? That's unrealistic. <laughs> Be aware of the immediate challenges that are taking place. When I was transitioning careers from coaching into ministry, I knew there was an immediate challenge. The immediate challenge was there's going to be a couple of months where there's not going to be any revenue flowing from my side into the household income. Immediate challenge. That made the journey tough. But I was aware of it. When I can name it, when I'm aware of it, I can prepare for it. And prepare for it doesn't mean I'm going to solve it. 
Prepare for it can be preparing for it mentally. Prepare for it can mean, hey, I'm going to have to eat toast and butter for, for, for a couple of weeks. I'm preparing myself for that. So it's not always that I'm going to do away with the immediate challenge, but it's about how am I getting myself ready for the journey? How am I preparing myself for the journey? I love what happens with Jonathan. He tells his armor bearer again. Right? First he says, let's go over. Now he uses some language that's, that's quite unique. Perhaps God, perhaps God, perhaps God, I don't know about y'all, but that's not certain enough for me. I don't, I don't work off perhaps. <laughs> Do y'all work off perhaps? I don't. Here's what's so crazy about it. He's talking about his life. Not talking about necessarily a career decision. Not talking about a relationship decision. Like we talking about his, he's talking about his life. Talking about perhaps God. <laughs> perhaps God. I want us to sit in there for a minute. Perhaps God wants to move in this thing that you have been unwilling to make a decision about. Oftentimes, we think <laughs> that we waiting on God but it's typically the other way around. He's waiting on us. I'm here. I'm, I'm with you. Are you going to make a decision about this? I've given you everything you will need. I've equipped you with wisdom, with understanding. I sent you my spirit to come and live on the inside of you. Are you going to make a decision? What is it that you're going to do? We, we, we want God to, to, to micromanage us. No, I've given you what you need to make a decision. And that's why I said earlier, if we're really honest with ourselves, what's the real reason why we're not going over? What's the real reason? A lot of times, it's the fear of the unknown. A lot of times is, man, I don't want to go through <laughs> the immediate challenges and the rough journey that it takes. I'll just sit here in this place of not having to actually say yes or no. A lot of times it's we can't see beyond the environment or the circumstance that we're in. It doesn't look strategic. So we're like, no, God can't be in this. This can't be God. Perhaps, perhaps God wants to do something on your behalf and he's waiting on your yes. Perhaps God wants to bless that business you've been thinking about, but he's, he's waiting on you. He's not going to send an angel to tell you to start it. He's waiting on you. Perhaps, right, he wants to come alongside of you in this relationship you've been thinking about. Ah, uh, should I should I start? Step into it. Perhaps he wants to do something in it, but he's, he's waiting on you. 
I love what the, what the armor bearer says to him. Go for it. <laughs> Whatever's in your heart. Let's do it. Now, the back end of the story, they go up, they defeat the garrison, the Israelite armies are rallied, and it all came from this small group of people who decided to make a decision that we weren't going to stay in this place of comfort of not making a decision but we're going to move forward. We're going to believe that God wants to do something through our hands, through our thinking, through our life. We, we want to move forward. There's things that God has placed in each one of us. Desires. Things that will impact our families, our communities, the people around us. And he's waiting on us to make a decision. Will you make the decision? Will you make the decision? I even believe this morning that some of us in the room and there's stuff that maybe we've been thinking about for years mulling over. And we're like, when God tells me, when he gives me this clear, clear, clear <laughs> thing, then I'll step out on it. Right? This is your word. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Bow your heads. Let me pray with you. God, we, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you are here, you're present with us, you're speaking and you're moving. You know what is on every individual's mind right now, what's coming up. You know the situation, you know the circumstance. And we say we trust you to speak into it. We trust you to speak into it. God, we thank you that maybe there's even seasons and there's times where everything doesn't look maybe the way that we think it should look. Maybe we're not in the most strategic of places. But God, the location doesn't determine what you want to do and how you want to do it and when you want to do it. God, give us the strength, give us the courage to say yes to you, yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to the desires that you placed on the inside of us. God, help us to make a move out of the, out of the comfort zone. God, even help us to take a good look at ourselves. And, and maybe we've, we've found ourselves saying we're waiting on you, but we know deep down inside it's, it's us not wanting to make a decision because we don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to be responsible for the outcome on the other side of it. God, will you help us to release that? One, we will make mistakes. <laughs> we are not perfect. We won't do everything right. But God, we trust in that you are with us in the mistakes that we make, in the things that we don't get right, you're there to restore, to put back together, to journey with. And it's because of that, God, that we can take a step into the unknown. It's because of that we can go over. It's because of that we can face the immediate challenges that come into our life. So we say we thank you this morning. God, we pray also that... Um, yeah, you would just do something in us that we would be reminded of this moment when we leave this place and we're contemplating or we're trying to make decisions about 
what to do next, uh, that you would remind us that you have given us everything that we need to move forward. God, we love you. We honor you. We ask these things in your name. Amen.